Hi all, this is Jewel from Making Sense. Today's lecture will be on the origin of two-dimensional electron gas in gallium nitrate, aluminium gallium nitrate hemp, or we know as high electron mobility transistor. So at first, let's have a look at the structure of the algen gan hemp. So it has algen on top and gallium nitrate on, on the bottom and there is substrate that might be gallium nitrate or something else like sapphire, silicon or silicon carbide based on the applications of thermal management system. But our today's topic is mainly focused on how the two-dimensional electron gas, or in short we call it 2 deg, how the 2 deg is originated. What's the physics behind that? So for a preface, let's start that where the 2 deg lies. So the 2 deg stays between the algen and GAN interface. So actually the 2 deg is between these two interfaces, algen and GAN. So there is a bunch of electrons. That, you, they, that we call the two-dimensional because they are kind of confined in a plane. They can propagate or move around in the x and y direction, but they cannot hop around the z direction. And that's why there will be less number of scattering from the bulk or any kind of dopant, which is usual reason for the scattering from the impurities. And that's why the mobility of this kind of transistor is so high. And that's why we call it a hemmed. That means high electron mobility transistor. The electron mobility is so high in this kind of transistors. So as you can see, this there are three terminals as usual for the transistor, the source, drain, and the gate. And there will be a channel already formed uh, in between the algen and GAN layer. And that's why usually this is normally on device, but there are several mechanisms that we'll see in later videos that how to make this device a normally off device or enhancement mode device. So before going into those details, let's have a look how the gallium nitrate looks like. So it is called, the woodsite structure or crystal lattice and I have already denoted the nitrogen atom and the gallium atoms and because of its non-centrosymmetric manner I mean by non-centrosymmetric we mean the the atoms surrounding the nitrogen atoms they are not symmetric or centrosymmetric so that they are pulling each other because nitrogen and gallium they do have different electronegativity and by electronegativity we mean the tendency of pulling electron towards it and that's why due to the difference between the electronegativities the nitrogen is more negative compared to the gallium and that's why there will be some spontaneous polarization vector created inside the structure so by polarization we mean there will be a positive charge and negative charge they will be further apart from each other and that's kind of a dipole they cannot move around but they create an, an electric field or internal electric field inside so we'll see that Inside this gallium nitrate, there is a dipole. And there are several other sort of subtleties that I'm not discussing here. There can be gallium phase crystal or nitrogen phase crystal, but that's a discussion for later videos. But for now, we'll realize that there is a polarization inside the gallium nitrate crystal. That is called the spontaneous polarization. That is because even without applying any kind of pressure or mechanical stress, there will be this polarization factor inside. And if we apply some polarization stress, if we apply some mechanical stress, then this angle between these bonds of this gallium and nitrogen atoms, if I denote this by theta, that angle will increase or decrease depending on the tensile stress or compressive stress. And depending on that stress, there is another polarization vector will be created, which we call the piezoelectric polarization. By piezoelectric, we mean that the input will be the pressure or mechanical stress and the output will be some voltage or some electric field. And that's why, because of this strain, there will be two different kind of polarization in gallium nitrate. One will be the piezoelectric, another will be spontaneous. So that is so natural. So we already know that there are two materials in the hemp. One is the algen. Basically, that's a gallium nitrate structure, but we are incorporating some mole fraction of aluminum there. And depending on that mole fraction, we'll see that that varies a lot uh, how the two-dimensional electron gas will form, how much concentration we'll get, and things like that. So let's have a look how this two-dimensional electron can be created by these polarization vectors uh, when they're n-type doped. That means we have doped it such a dopant so that there will be a bunch of electrons in the conduction band. Say, for example, with phosphorus or nitrogen, as usual. So let's have a look at the energy band diagram now. So we'll first analyze how the two-dimensional electron gas is created in n-doped aluminum gallium nitrate. 
And later we'll show that for two-dimensional electron gas creation, we don't need any intentional doping. And then we'll focus on how then we can get some two deg without even some doping. Because we know the source of electron is usually the doping, the phosphorus doping or the nitrogen doping. So let's have a look at this. So this is the LGAN. And we are seeing that the, there are three energy levels, the con conventional, the conduction band. This is the uh, conduction band, the valence band, as well as the Fermi level. And the Fermi level is very close to the conduction band because it is n-type doped, right? And n-type doped means there will be a bunch of electrons in the conduction band. And that's why the Fermi level is very close. And we're also seeing some positive charge and negative charge in the surface. So this is the top surface where there is so many electrons. And in the bottom surface, there will be a lot of positive charge. But remember, these are bound charge like a dipole. And they, has been, they have been created by these polarization vectors that I have already shown here. So they are also present in the aluminum gallium nitrate as well because the LGAN is placed on top of the gallium nitrate crystal and their lattice structure are not matching to each other. And that's why, so gallium nitrate will uh, insert some kind of tensile strain on the LGAN and that's why there will be some polarization, uh, the PAG electric polarization because of that stress. So what will happen when there is a, a polarization vector or electric field in this crystal? There will be an electric field and that electric field will create this band bending. So that's very well known from Poisson's equation. Whenever there is a charge or electric field present, there will be the band bending associated with that electric field. And as this is an n-doped uh, electric, I mean n-doped layer, there will be many electrons on top of the uh, conduction band. And as this band has been bent, these conduction band electrons will propagate towards the bottom LGAN. And when they're accumulating at the bottom surface, there will be huge bend at the near to the surface. And this area will be almost flat because when these mobile electrons of the conduction band are propagating towards the interface, they will leave so many positively charged donor atoms. So th those are very common from the PN junction theory. So, so that the charge is balanced or neutralized. Now, when we connect this gallium nitrate coming together with the LGAN, you see that this Fermi level is very far away from the Fermi level of the gallium nitrate. So whenever the two systems are showing some different Fermi level, there is non-equilibrium existing. And in an overall system where there is no external bias or light shining, the Fermi level should be constant throughout. And to make that Fermi level constant, the accumulated charge that we have already shown here, those accumulation of electrons will try to propagate towards the gallium nitrate. And that's why gallium nitrate band will bend because there will be a huge number of electrons coming from the LGAN and that will bend the gallium nitrate interface and the LGAN will no longer be that much bent because there are some positive charge and there are negative electrons at the interface which we call the two-dimensional electron gas or two deg. That will create another electric field which is opposite to the previous pH electric electric field. And that's the overall, overall story, how 2DEG is created in N-doped structure. So now that we have learned how 2DEG is created in N-doped LGAN, we have to remember that for creating the two-dimensional electron gas, we don't need any kind of, un, I mean, intentional doping. That's the beauty of this LGAN gen hemmed. So how, how do they come from? So let's have a look why we cannot create some 2DEG in undoped LGAN. In theory so this is the LGAN structure and you have as usual the conduction Fermi level and the valence band and we have the PSU electric electric field already present there because of that strain coming from the gallium nitrate because the lattice constants are not matching and because of that it will bend so only difference between the previous graph and this one is the Fermi level position this Fermi level is in the middle because it is no longer n doped that's why it's not close to the conduction band and that's why, because of this electric field coming from this spontaneous pH electric field, you see that the band is bending. And similarly, Fermi is coming in the equilibrium, but there is no electron here. Like before, there is no electron here because it's no longer doped. And that's why no source of electrons. And that's why it cannot come to this interface to bend this uh, energy. And as long as there is no bend, if we place this gallium nitrate here, you see the Fermi level of them 
are very near to each other or even in some cases the gallium nitrate fermi level will be even higher compared to the algan and that's why there is no propagation of electrons from the gan algan surface to the gallium nitrate surface and that's why there is no two dimensional electron gas is formed but actually we know that in practice there will be a huge number of two dimensional electron gas then how do they come because you know there will be a ph electric polarization in the algan that's directed towards this line plus in the interface and minus at the top surface similarly there will be another polarization vector spontaneous p is spontaneous that is coming from the gallium nitrate and that is also creating some positive charge here and some negative bound charge at the interface these things are not two dimensional electron gas so don't confuse these are totally bound charge and because of the presence of these bound charge so the likelihood of getting some free electrons is even less so the thing we are getting from in practice that is the two-dimensional electron gas is very highly unlikely in this kind of situation so let's have a look how can they be originated so this is a new theory and it's well accepted recently so actually what is happening yes the elegant gan is not doped and that's why even if there is an electric field present because of this spontaneous and ph electric polarization you see there is an electric field and that electric field creates the band bending but previously we saw that there is no source of electrons coming from the doping but that's true but the thing is most interesting thing is there is some trap sites in the surface top surface of the algan so we can call it the traps or the surface state surface donor states so because of the fermi level pinning at these trap sites these trap sites are full of electrons so whenever there is some bending of the electrons bending of the energy band it can create a bunch of electrons given to the conduction band and that electron because of this present electric field that will propagate towards the interface of the algan and gan and because of that accumulation of that two bit two dimensional electron gas if we connect that to the gallium nitrate now this fermi level which is coming from the trap sites and this fermi level of the gallium nitrate they are far apart and that's why to create the Fermi level equilibrium or constant everywhere these two dimensional electron gas or mobile electron gas will come to the surface of this gallium nitrate and the usual thing will happen the surface will bend of the gallium nitrate and the two dimensional electron come close to the gallium nitrate interface that will create a bound I would say bound that is kind of bound in the two dimensional plane that means that can move around easily in the x and y direction but not in the z direction and as all the electron has moved towards the gallium nitrate this will experience the usual electric field not from the charged electric field as we learned in the Poisson's equation so it, this is actually the um, how, how the two-dimensional electron gas is created so the surface states they are the main contributor and as they have already contributed all these electrons they were previously charged neutral but right now they will be positively charged that is also the bound charge so how can we show all those charge states in this algan interface so we have already seen that in the algan there will be some charge at this interface the positive charge and the negative charge at the top layer of the again so this is the charge or the bound charge of the aluminum gallium nitrate on the other hand there will be some negative charge coming from the gallium nitrate and positive charge coming from the gallium nitrate bottom and there is also bound charge so what is the mobile charge that is coming from these trap sites these trap sites are now positively charged because they have donated a lot of electrons and those electrons have come towards this interface and that is the two-dimensional electron gas coming from the positively charged traps so so there will be some built-in electric fields in the algan the electric field will be from positive to the negative bound charge similarly in the gallium nitrate the electric field will be from the positive to the negative the, that is also the bound charge and there will be another electric field generated from the positive surface charge coming from the trap or the donor sites to the two-dimensional electric field which is opposite to this bound electric fields so i hope that will give you guys a different perspective on the origin of the two-dimensional electron gas and we'll talk about the transistor even in further details in later videos so till then makes sense